Hello again, YouTubers. Welcome back to the Board Game Captain. I'm your host, the Board Game Captain, and today I'm going to be reviewing and showing you how to play the game Dark is the Night. Now, Dark is the Night is a, a little hidden movement game where one player is a hunter at a campfire and the other player is a monster who's going around in the darkness circling the campfire and you don't know where the monster is. They have a hidden movement dial and it's the hunter's objective to find them and kill the monster, while it's the monster's, monster's objective to outmaneuver the hunter and kill the hunter. This is a two-player game for uh, listed for 15 minutes and ages 10 and up. So let's start there. Well, nothing to talk about with two players. It's an exactly two-player game. As for the 15 minutes, that estimate seems a bit long to me. I've had most of the games last somewhere around five to seven minutes of this so far, and I've played it about, about five or six times. And as for the ages 10 and up, that's a bit of an overestimate to me. I would drop that down to about a seven and up. The rules are very simple, very simple in this one. Let's have a look at what comes in the box. So the first thing you have here is the game board, which is folded up in fours, but is super tiny. And you can see it there. It is, the, the board is literally just spaces around the campfire, one space for the campfire, and then numbers and letters around in the darkness on the outside of the board. And that's for where the monster will be. Then we have the rule book here. The rule book is about 10 pages long uh, for this tiny little game, but a lot of them are full page illustrations and diagrams. And mostly the rule book is well done, but there are a few ambiguities in here where I had to read sections a few times and go looking. And um, there were a couple things that were a little tough to figure out. I did figure it out. It's not the worst rule book ever, ever done, but I, it's not really the best rule book ever done either. It's kind of middle of the road in that regard. Then we have the um, put together the put together dial here. Now this is a fairly easy item to put together. All you have to do is take this big ring which has numbers on it and this littler ring which has a, a open gap on it and these two snap together pieces to put it together. But I do want to draw attention to the fact that while it is fairly easy to put together, um, they did not include any sort of instruction on how to put it together. So I actually did kind of stare at it for a few minutes until I figured it out because it would have been really nice to just have a little thing on the back of the book or the front of the, in the front of the book maybe on the inside cover that just showed you how to put this together and they did not include that. It's a minor gripe. I was able to figure it out without too much trouble, but I'm just saying, they, it says ages 10 and up, and a 10-year-old might have a little trouble looking at these pieces and go, all right, what do I do with this? And it doesn't, you know, it doesn't really tell you. And then we have, now, there's a, a totally unnecessary miniature. This is a bit of overproduction, if you ask me. For the hunter, uh, this is not a game that needs a miniature. The hunter could have been a little cardboard uh, punch-out token, but... They decided to do the miniature, and to be fair, the miniature is very well done. It is very nicely sculpted. It looks really cool, and this is, I mean, this is a paint-worthy miniature. You could paint this if you wanted. And the final bit of components are a bunch of little cardboard punch-out chits. You have uh, the sun chit, which is to keep track of the uh, uh, countdown to the end of the game, which happens uh, to prevent uh, a... Uh, to, to kind of light a fire under you because uh, if the hunter player runs out of their tokens and neither neither player is dead yet, you put this here and you have a limited number of turns until there's a stalemate. So this kind of is to light a fire under your butt to get you moving and trying to find your opponent. Then we have arrow tokens. Now there are two of these. On one side they are arrows and on the other side, let me flip those over, they are flaming arrows, and that happens when you fire an arrow over the campfire. You can use it as a flaming arrow, or you can use it as a regular arrow. A regular arrow is to kill the monster. A flaming arrow is to permanently light up a space so that any time the, the monster enters that space, they have to tell you they are there. We have a meat token here, which is to lure the monster and get a better idea of where it is. We have a bell trap here, which is if the monster passes over it, will jingle, and then 
you will get a better idea of where the monster is. And we have the monster's only token, uh, which is this one here, which is the faint token, which is to help the monster better hide. So there you have it. That's everything that comes in the box for Dark is the Night. So now let's head over to the table. I'm going to show you how this game is played. Then we're going to come back. I'm going to talk about how it feels. I'm going to rate it and review it. And then we're going to get a second opinion from Lynn. Okay, so here we can see a game of Dark is the Night set up. Now, the monster first takes their dial, and the first thing they do is they choose their starting location, which I'm going to show you right now. There is my starting location. My opponent doesn't know what that is. And then my opponent, the hunter, chooses their starting location and puts themselves on the board. The monster takes their faint token, which when they use it, they place it wherever they happen to be, if that was there, for instance. And then while the hunter will know exactly where I am, then I get to move without, uh, uh, without giving away at all. I get to move in one direction or the other, zero, one, or two spaces. There are no corner spaces. You move directly there to there, and you are a uh, adjacent to your enemy only when you are orthogonally adjacent, never diagonally. Now, on the first turn, neither the hunter nor the monster may use any of their tokens, and the hunter's tokens they have are the bell trap that they are allowed to do in addition to moving on one of their turns, uh, except for the first one, of course, and when they place it somewhere, if the monster leaves that space, the bell trap gets discarded and the monster has to tell the hunter that they just left the space, which will narrow it down to two possible spaces the monster can be in right now. The uh, mutton, if the hunter places that, the monster must, on the, on the hunter's turn, move one space towards the mutton and then tell the hunter how many spaces away from the mutton they are. And the arrows, they have two arrows they can fire. If they fire it as a normal arrow, it goes as, uh, all the way across the board. And if the monster is in that space, the monster will die. Or if they fire it through the fire, they have the option, they don't have to, but they can fire it as a fire arrow uh, to light up that space. If the monster is there, they must immediately tell the hunter player that they are there. If the monster ever enters that space for the rest of the game, they must tell the hunter that they are there. And in addition to firing arrows, the hunter has a knife and can always stab into the darkness at the orthogonally adjacent space where they are. But again, on the first turn, all the, the hunter and the monster can do is move, and the hunter goes first. So go ahead, hunter. You're supposed to tell me what... Uh, oh, what right. Thank you. I almost forgot, but Lynn reminded me, I have to start by telling her what letter, so the side that I am on, to help her narrow it down. I am on side D, which is over here, which has the numbers 10, 11, and 12 on it. So Lynn just moved towards my side. I'm going to move one space, which I do on my dial here. I'm going to show you where I have moved so you can see. And then it is Lynn's turn and she can move and uh, do an action or an attack if she so chooses. Do you move first? Sorry. So she's no. going to move to the two space and put a bell trap on the 11 space outside of darkness. So now I am going to move again. Let me just show you where I have moved to. And I'm going to announce that I just set off the bell trap. So now Lynn knows I am either in space 10 or 12. I'm going to shoot an arrow there. And that's it. The game just ended because I was in space 12. And sometimes that's all there is to it. And firing an arrow there was the right choice because she did kind of have a 50-50 shot at catching me, and she got me. So that's really all there is to it, to a game of Dark is the Night. So now we're gonna head back uh, downstairs. I'm going to tell you how this game feels, I'm gonna review it, and I'm gonna rate it, and then we're gonna get a second opinion from Lynn. So that was how you play a game of Dark is the Night. Now, I forgot to mention in the beginning of this video, which I usually like to point out, this is a game by Ape Games, and it was designed by Zach Abbott, Arwen Boyer, and Josh Estill. Now, when I saw this theme, I was very attracted to the theme. I thought 
you know, a, a, the hunter around a campfire and the story of this, this, this monster is circling around the campfire and they're by themselves and they have limited resources to fight the monster. That is cool. I really like the theme. And you know what? The production of the game and the theme, they really fit together well. The game mechanics feel like they were designed to really mirror that theme. And the production quality of the components is really nice. Everything looks really good. And I was really hoping that this was going to be a gateway level hidden movement game for me to be able to teach people that aren't as into heavy games as I am to, because a lot of the other hidden movement games are usually quite a bit heavier. Things like Fury of Dracula or Letters from Whitechapel. These are great games, but they're very heavy. They're not something you can teach to children. They're not something you can teach to new gamers. And I was hoping that this was going to be that game for me, a hidden movement game that I could teach to people that don't play as heavy games as I like to play sometimes. And you know what, if you have young children, we're talking seven-year-olds, eight-year-olds, this might not be a bad choice for you for teaching your seven or eight-year-old how to play a hidden movement game. But they're gonna enjoy this game more than you are because once you are teenage years and up, this game is just way too simple. There's not enough meat on this. In fact, this is really a bare bone without any meat to gnaw off at all. The game is very abrupt. It doesn't last very long. And after a couple of plays, you've experienced how every game of this is going to go. Because, yes, there's hidden movement, but the hidden movement is really just two directions. You can go clockwise or counterclockwise. And, yeah, there's different tokens that help you narrow down where your opponent is, but none of them feel particularly fun or engaging. And... Very often, you can wind up uh, having one of the players kill the other in the second or third turn. That happens, in my opinion, far too often um, to be interesting. That, that's not an interesting game when you're three turns in and someone goes, Oh, I gotcha. Oh, great. And that actually happened, not by planning, that happened by happenstance when we were showing how to play the game. We only played a couple of turns and Lynn was able to figure out where I was. And shoot me. Now, maybe I made a silly decision by going towards her rather than away from her. But, you know, sometimes that happens. You make that decision. You decide, you know what, I'm going to try to move towards her because I want to see if I can uh, get around her and, and, and kill the, the hunter. But she was able to catch me. And that happens a lot. And generally speaking, I don't very much like this game. Now, I don't hate this game. I don't even really dislike this game. I'm just very mediocre on this game. It's very middle of the road. It doesn't do a whole lot to stand out for me. It, there, I would, if I want to play a hidden movement game, there are many other hidden movement games I would play before this. And if I wanted to play an intro level game, there are other intro level games I would play before this. And if I want to play a hidden movement intro level game, well, I guess I'm just I'm gonna have to do without because I'm probably gonna wind up calling this game for my collection fairly shortly because I did not like it very much. And that's why I give Dark is the Night five stars. And it saddens me to do this. It saddens me to give it a rating that low because I love the theme and the production quality is really nice. But this game is just not for me and that's why I only give it five out of 10 stars. But let's get another opinion because differing opinions matter. Lynn. How many stars out of 10 would you give to Dark is the Night? Five. So Lynn is right there with me. We're both very meh on this game. Five stars from me, five stars from Lynn. Now five is not really a negative score. It's a mediocre score. So that's neither thumbs up nor thumbs down. It's just sort of meh. And there you have it. So if you have any questions on the game Dark is the Night, any questions, comments, or concerns, or questions, comments, or concerns on this video, be sure to put them in the comments down below. And if you, if you enjoyed this video and you would like to see us do more review and tutorial videos like it, be sure to give this video a like, share this video, and if you haven't already, please subscribe to the Board Game Captain. That's Captain spelt with a K on YouTube. And until next time, game on.